What is the difference between BOA, pin lock, and vacuum? Do you know what the K systems are? If not, this video is for you. And at the very end, I am so excited to tell you about a brand new socket that's still in the development phase, hasn't been released yet, but I got to play a part in. on my left leg and I've been that way for 15 months. Today I'm going to be talking about sockets. In my next video I will be talking about the feet components but this is such a comprehensive subject I had to break it down into two different videos so that will be my follow-up video. Today I'm going to introduce you to my socket and why this one was the best one for me at the time but I am also going to introduce you to a couple of other very popular sockets that you might want to consider. But keep in mind, prosthetists are going to be your very best friend. You want to find one that's very knowledgeable, but also one that isn't afraid to think outside of the box. If you have a unique situation, there seems to be a socket for anybody because you can also combine a lot of the socket ideas, which we'll get into a little bit later. But first, a quick little backstory of why I lost my leg. 12 years ago, I had a motorcycle accident that actually snapped my tailless bone, which is this foot bone right here. There's a big bone right there. It was cut in half and it was turned sideways. So if it fits like this, it was underneath itself and turned sideways. They pulled it apart, put it back together, screwed it back together. I thought it would heal just fine because of all of the bones that I had broken over the past 30 years at that point. My foot actually never healed correctly. It healed in a pointed position called drop foot. And this was such a painful condition for me. I woke up at a level eight pain every morning, barely got through the day and was crawling by the end of the night. In my last attempt to try to fix my foot, I was looking at ankle replacement or fusion and I found out that I was no longer a candidate due to dying bone. It would just chip off if they tried to drill anything into it like screws or plates. So I had to face the reality that this was my condition until I decided to cut it off and I actually had a doctor tell me it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, the amputation at this point, it's more of a matter of when. So if you want to choose it on your own timetable, go ahead and do that. If not, just wait until your foot gives out and we'll address it then. So my husband and I decided that it was better on our timetable. We wanted to take off work at a specific time of the year, not have the kids in school, get a babysitter, all the things. And we decided to do it January 2nd, 2021. And you can look back at that entire decision-making process, amputation and life after up until this point. I've documented it all for the people walking through this journey on my YouTube channel. I'm just gonna pop in here real quick and say that before you start down this road, make sure you call your insurance company first because there are a couple things that they might not pay for. They're a little bit picky about things like pumps, waterproof, adjustable feet, things like that. Also, while I have your attention, if you appreciate this type of content, go ahead and push that subscribe button so I can keep doing it. Eight weeks after my elective amputation of my left leg, I was fitted for my very first test socket. Come to find out, a lot of clinics don't make test sockets, so if that's something that you want after I describe it to you, make sure you find a clinic that does that. My very first fitting was for a plastic test socket with a vacuum ring suspension system. Let's break this down. The vacuum ring system is exactly that. It has a one-way valve on here. When I push my leg in, the air comes out, and this allows no air to come back in. The ring system is a liner that has kind of a gel consistency to protect the skin. These lines on here are silicone and they can create their own suction, but this system works best with the rings. These little rings create even more suction and really hold this socket on so that when I put them on like this, and I put my leg in like that. I open the valve and then I close it and that thing is stuck on there. It's not coming off. 
the plastic part of my test socket from my initial socket that was made is because my residual limb and probably everybody's shrinks rapidly right after amputation. There's a lot of things going on in there and there's a lot of atrophy that takes place with the muscles and the ligaments and all that stuff that's in there not being used, it's going to get smaller. So in order to not have to get a new socket, every single time you go to the prosthetist, mine made me a test socket made out of plastic. That way he can heat it up and shrink it down or bump out certain parts that need to be changed to make me more comfortable before they actually make my carbon fiber socket. My residual limb is actually not end bearing at all, even though I've had an ertal procedure. The ertal procedure is a bone bridge connecting the two bones in your leg. He puts bone tissue there and waits for it to heal. A lot of amputees love it. Some amputees don't want it because it's a longer healing period. That is completely up to you and your surgeons. But if it's something that you like, it's out there and available. Even though I have that bone bridge, I am not end bearing, meaning I cannot bear weight on the end of my residual limb. It is incredibly painful. Right here, I have a relief area in my socket. This is my bone right here. It is very tender to walk on. That is just skin and bone. There is no meat, there is no tissue, there is nothing there except skin and bone. So whenever I push on that, it is incredibly painful. It will drop me to my face. It feels like to me is if you were to have a blister on the back of your foot, your heel, and you still have several blocks to walk, you still have to rub that blister every step that you take. Now add a rock or a burr to it. That's what it feels like. It's almost impossible to walk and it is not possible for me to push through that for more than about four to five steps before I have to call for some help. So this little bump out area in my socket was created by my prosthetist heating it up and pushing it out so that my socket does not touch the end of my limb at all. This little relief area in my limb being, there's a bee in here. This little relief area in my socket and my limb being so incredibly sensitive is actually a limitation for me for other sockets, which I will explain in just a minute. So this socket actually holds me up on the sides and not the bottom. I do not walk on the bottom. But throughout the day, as I lose volume in my limb, I think it's water or blood, I don't know, it gets skinnier and that means my socket does not change. It is the same size socket. So my limb slips further in creating that end bearing effect. So in order to fix that, what I do is I add socks to bulk up the sides of my leg for the volume that I have lost so that my socket fits perfectly again and holds me up on the sides away from that tender little area on the end. Right now I'm in about eight ply. By the end of the day, I will probably be close to 11 ply, which is generally the time that you want to get fitted for a new socket. Medicare in the United States says that at 11 ply, it is no longer safe to wear your prosthetic leg anymore and you need it fixed, reduced, or replaced. The socks are much like when you have to wear layers outside for different weather occasions throughout the day. You want to make sure you're nice and warm in the morning, but then in the afternoon you start taking them off, but you want to hold on to them in case you need them for when it cools off a little bit later. That's the same for me. I have to take socks everywhere that I go because I don't know what my leg is going to do. It's going to depend on my diet, my exercise level for that day, the weather. There are so many different components that can play a part in why I need socks and when I need them and how many I need. And there's actually a socket with an alternative to socks that I will talk to you about in a little bit. Once my limbs stopped shrinking so rapidly, my prosthetist and I were comfortable making my first carbon fiber socket and I was so excited. I put so much effort into the design of it and I only had it a few weeks. So just know that your first couple of sockets don't put a whole lot of emphasis on the design. It will most likely be temporary. My insurance plan does not cover things like adjustable feet, the ones that you can um, wear heels with, and they also don't cover waterproof sockets. That was something that I really wanted um, to make my life a little bit more easy 
going to the pool or the beach or taking a shower or whatever. I wanted a waterproof socket, but they don't cover that. Luckily, I asked my prosthetist and he gave me everything already waterproof. All I needed was a suspension sleeve. This fits over my socket, securing it to my skin and making it completely waterproof. The only danger for me in this particular socket of getting wet is that when water seeps down in here, it will literally float me out of the socket and it will come off and I will not be able to walk. I in fact did that at the pool one time. I did not plan on going to the pool. We stopped by, we sat in the water for a minute. I got more wet than I planned by being splashed by my kids. I could barely walk home because my sock was wet, my liner was wet, and the whole time my socket was trying to come off with every step that I took. I had to be very careful. So what I do is I put it on upside down and inside out. I flip the bottom like this so that that silicone side sticks to my socket. This is never easy for me to do. This is always such a pain. What I do is I wear my socket like normal and then I roll the suspension sleeve just like that. And now I have a waterproof barrier starting at my skin, covers all of my socks, the opening of my prosthetic leg all the way down to where there is another seal where water can't get in. And now I'm completely safe to swim, go to the beach, whatever. The only problem with this is that it is kind of hard to walk in because there's not a lot of knee range of motion. So I always walk a little bit weird because my knee doesn't bend very well. I do not need to wear this suspension sleeve unless I am in the water because of the socket system that I have. However, there is a socket system that uses this all the time. I believe that this is a system that Footless Joe has. From seeing her take her leg off and put it back on several times, I think that she has this suspension sleeve suction prosthesis system. It still has the one-way valve, but there are no rings with this system. It's just the liner, the suspension sleeve, and the socket. As active as Footless Joe is, I'm surprised that she chose the suspension sleeve socket system because of the limited range of motion. But here's the thing. There are so many different socket systems and combination of systems that you kind of have to prioritize your needs and wants and go with the higher priority thing. This is where knowing a very knowledgeable and patient prosthetist comes into play. There is a socket system for everybody, so make sure you do your research and find a prosthetist that's willing to help you, willing to work with you, and if they're not, find a new one. But together, your knowledge base together will be able to find the perfect socket system for you. The next socket system I wanna talk about is one that I almost got and was really excited about, um, but decided at the last minute not to based on my prosthetist advice. That is a direct fit vacuum pump suction socket. <laughs> okay, again, these are two different things. They are completely independent from each other, the vacuum pump and the direct fit socket. So we'll talk about the direct fit socket first. Direct fit, meaning you are there at the prosthetist office and they paint on your socket much like a cast and it dries to you right there in the office. So this is one that you can get done the same day in most situations. Traditional sockets are made by putting on a cast, then pouring plaster into that cast, taking that plaster out, fitting your plastic or your carbon fiber to that mold, and then proceeding to make your prosthetic limb off of that mold. Direct fit is painted directly onto your leg. 
which sounds wonderful and I was excited to try it. Although, there is a place on my leg that acts a little bit crazy sometimes and I was not a candidate for direct fit socket for two reasons. The first reason is if you see right here, here is another bump out on my socket for my uh, bone. I forgot what bone it is, but whatever. Whatever that bone is right there. Um, whenever I'm laying down, there is no bump at all. It's just nice and smooth. You can't really even feel it under my skin, but as soon as I stand up, that bone just just sticks out the side of my leg. So we had to make an accommodation area for that on my socket because every time he would cast me with my leg down and then I would stand up and that bone would stick out, I would have a lot of pain. So back and forth he went to the manufacturing room and he came back one time with a hot plastic test socket. Had me step in it real fast, stand up, and make that bone push out the relief area that it needed. So that made my socket accommodate my bone perfectly. But we would not have been able to do that as far as I know, maybe they can, with a direct fit socket. While we are on this subject real fast, I wanna throw in something that might be important to you. Um, my prosthetist office has a manufacturing facility inside their office. They go from my fitting room to their manufacturing room. It's right across the hall from um, where they cast me and do all this work so they can go back and forth and make the perfect socket. Some clinics do not have manufacturing in-house. They take your cast mold or whatever it might be and send it off. It could be days, weeks, or months, depending on where you are and how hard of a fit you are. And then when you receive it back, it might, your limb might have changed completely and now your socket doesn't fit at all, which is so frustrating. So find somebody who does it in-house or somebody that has a really quick turnaround period so that whenever you get your socket system back, it still fits. The other reason that I cannot have a direct fit socket is because my limb is so sensitive. My residual limb is like this dainty little limb that you can't touch it, you can't look at it, you can't talk about it wrong, otherwise it hurts. So I have to make sure that I have the correct relief areas in there, which again might be a challenge with the direct fit socket, not saying they can't do it, but with my particular insurance, I had to get one socket. That's it, that's all I get. And if they make it wrong or if it doesn't fit or something goes wrong with it and I decide a couple weeks later that it's not working for me, there might be some big challenges with that. So I decided to go with a traditional socket instead. The vacuum pump part of that direct fit socket, I was super excited about that because it is an alternative to the socks. What happens is they make your socket, however they make it, they can even use my traditional socket um, that was made out of a cast mold, or they can use the direct fit socket or any other socket, doesn't matter. They put a pump inside the bottom of where you step and it runs a um, pump up to your socket and it sucks out the air every time you step. This is amazing because what it does is it, it fills that void every single time you step. So whenever I sit down, after a long day, my leg will swell and I have to take off all those socks, I have to take my socket off, let it breathe, try again. But with the pump, all you would have to do is let the air out, let your leg rest, and then whenever you stand up, you pump a couple times and it fits perfectly again. This, I was so excited about this vacuum pump, but after talking to my prosthetist who knows way more than me, we decided it wasn't a good fit because of this little bump right here. You're so sensitive. Because of this little relief area that doesn't actually have anything in it in my socket, it's just a void area, that pump would constantly be sucking on that area, eventually causing a blister. And that is what I don't want. So the vacuum pump would have virtually eliminated my need for socks, but alas, I am not a candidate for that socket system, but you might be and I have heard wonderful things about it. So do your research, talk to your prosthetist, see if it's something you might need. Speaking of not wanting to deal with socks, this brings me to the next socket system, which is the BOA system. This system would have also eliminated my need for socks because it uses a dial to actually tighten and loosen your socket. It has cutouts with dials on it with cords that go around. 
as your limb increases or decreases in volume, you can give yourself a custom fit by turning those dials wherever they are placed on your socket, shrinking or expanding it to make it comfortable all day long. I opted not to get this socket because through my research, I have found that those cables can break. And then at that point, you are left without a socket. Your socket will not fit because if those cables break, there's nothing holding those pieces to your socket, securing you in it. So then you're left in a wheelchair or on a different walking aid until you can get to your prosthetist and get that sucker fixed. And to be honest, I don't know if they can re-thread those cords. If you know, put it in the comments if you have a BOA system. Um, I don't know if they can re-thread those cords, but from the manufacturing that I've seen, they actually put them into the socket when they're making it with carbon fiber. And so they might have to make a completely new socket. But if you know, please put it in the comments for everybody else to know too. I lead a super busy life and if one of those suckers snapped on me, I would be left in a wheelchair until I can get to my prosthetist with little kids and the things that we do and having stairs, it would be a mess. So I decided not to go with that system. I'll just deal with the socks because at least I know that that is a sure thing to get me through the day. The last system that we're gonna talk about today is pin lock. But remember, please remember, there are a hundred or more socket systems. Do not just think that these are the only ones. There are tons of them. And there are also some that are hybrids. They put some of them together. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But pin lock is essentially, it's a liner that has a pin on the bottom of it sticking out. And on the inside of your socket, there is a hole with a, almost like a uh, ratchet system so that whenever you push that pin in to that sock, that hole, you hear that click, 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 click. And the people who have pin lock absolutely love it because they know that sucker is secure and it's not coming off. I was never offered this system, maybe because I was happy with my current socket, but also probably because I'm not end bearing at all. I don't know if that has something to do with it. People with pin lock, please enlighten us. Put, us, put it in the comments if you can be um, not end bearing with pin lock. Apparently with pin lock, you have great knee range of motion and you have far less limited mobility and it's a quick on and off you just push a button and your your leg comes out the ones who love pin lock really really love it and i would actually like to try a hybrid of this meaning i would like to still have my vacuum suction socket but with a pin at the bottom of it so it would still have the ring system it would still have some sort of vacuum suction but also the rings and the reason is because Whenever I am walking in the store or even in my own living room, I have bumped this valve up against something and it opens. And then all of a sudden I take a step and I'm not suctioned into my socket and I can feel my limb like almost coming out of it. And that's a scary situation. So if I had that pin lock on the bottom of it and that valve opened, at least I know my leg won't fall off. All right, let's talk about the brand new innovative system that I had a teeny tiny hand in. It's out of the box approach to socket systems and it's actually made up of little tiles that fit together almost like a honeycomb on the outside of the socket. And the developers and the owners of this system reached out to me and they said, we can make a socket, but none of us are limb different. We need your opinion, we need to know what the struggles are that you go through, what would you like in a socket, what do you hate in a socket, things like that. And we had this really great in-depth, comprehensive conversation about how to build this socket bigger and better for the amputee community. Essentially, this socket would be kind of a one-time purchase and your prosthetist would use a special tool. It would not come apart on its own. It's not something that you can take apart on your own but they could take tiles off of the socket, shrinking it or adding some to expand it so that you don't have to either waste the time to get a socket made or spend the money that you don't have to get another socket done for you. Somebody like me without insurance now, this would be the perfect system for me. This system is still in the development phase. They haven't worked out all the kinks yet, but they did say that they wanted me as a test subject to try it out. So hopefully I will be able to get to show it to you guys soon. There is a system for everybody out there, new ones being developed to every day. But having a knowledgeable prosthetist is probably the biggest key to this entire decision-making process. 
but also keep in mind that once you find a prosthetist, some clinics only offer certain types of sockets due to their allegiance with certain manufacturers. So keep that in mind while you're going through this process of trying to find a clinic and a prosthetist and a socket and a foot and all these things. Also understand that your insurance company might have some limitations on what you get and what you don't get. So make sure you keep that in mind. This sounds very complicated, but I promise it's not. Do a little bit of research, call some offices, call your insurance company, be very transparent with everybody. Make sure you tell them what you need and what you want, where it hurts, what you are firm on, and what you might be able to be a little bit fluid on. Don't be rigid, but make sure that you communicate properly your needs. Otherwise, they won't be able to help you. Insurance companies. Let's talk about the K system. The K system is what insurance companies determine what they're going to pay for. K system is K1 through K4. K1 being basically bed bound. And keep in mind these are very general. I'm sure there's four pages of what these systems actually are, but this is just a general guideline to what the K system is. K1 is basically bed bound. K2 is you can walk a little bit with the help of aids and mobility devices. K3 is you are walking on your own. K4 is an active, healthy, athletic amputee. And those are the ones that qualify for the best equipment because they have proven to the insurance companies that yes, I do need this for a specific reason. It's to run a marathon or to live my busy life things like that. I don't think it's really hard to hit um, because I am overweight, but I do lead an active lifestyle and I'm young with little kids and there are a lot of things that I can do. I am a K4. Prosthetics is such a broad scope. That's why we have such wonderful um, professionals to help us make these decisions. But I hope that this video at least gave you a couple of good questions to ask to get you started. I think my biggest advice would be to make sure that you are clear on your priorities. One of my priorities was that I am active no matter what, that my socket is not going to break on me. It is solid as a rock. I can depend on it. It's going to be comfortable and I can get around and do whatever I want to do because that's why I cut my foot off to lead a better life. And that's the socket and system that I got. So find a recommended prosthetist. There are lots of forums on social media groups. I'm in a couple on Facebook. Those have been wonderful for finding a prosthetist. Um, you can ask your doctor for recommendations, but keep in mind they have allegiance to certain offices. So ask other amputees why they love their prosthetist. Even if you have to do a little bit of minor travel, um, I'm sure it will be worth the wait and the travel to go see the one who might be able to help you. I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on the different feet components and that is just as comprehensive as this one and I won't be able to cover all of them but I will cover the basic ones and the most popular ones and why I love mine and how we chose mine and things like that so I will see you on that video. I hope that you found value in this video and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I'll see you on the next video.